Hey guys, so today we're gonna start on the 3D printer refurbishing slash restoration project and we are gonna be starting on the main 3D printer controller and doing the, all the rewiring for the controller to the old sensors and motors. Okay, so I bought a, a few components uh, that I'm gonna show you in the bench right now. So let's go there. So those are the items that I was waiting for to start the printer refurbishing. And so here we have the main component, the new 3D printer controller. So this is a Big Tree Tech SKR Pro 1.1. And this uses an STM 32F407 ARM microcontroller, so it's a very powerful microcontroller. Um, I'm planning to use Clipper firmware uh, with this printer, so this microcontroller is more than enough for anything that I uh, would like to, to do. And as stepper drivers, I'm going with the Big Tree Tech with the Trinamic 5161 uh, drivers. And the reason that I'm going with this specific model is because I'm using big motors, also they need 3 amps as current uh, draw. Uh, so these uh, uh, drivers, they go up to 3.5 uh, RMS of current. So they're, they're gonna be able to, to drive uh, our motors with enough current. Okay, and also I have uh, here all the IOs that are necessary to to be controlling the uh, the whole printer, all the sensors. Uh, I also bought these uh, standoffs. They are M two two and a half, so they are very small compact and exactly what, what I need to for this application it already came with with the nuts and the screws so was was a good acquisition this is a kit for a raspberry so yeah I can use for the raspberry as well because we are gonna be used in a raspberry the raspberry I already have on hand and also the connectors this board uses these connectors they I just forgot JST P P H or P K is the code for for the connectors. They are very compact, so I got a, a kit on Amazon with these connectors as well. So yeah, we um, and this is the worst part of the whole building, um, on my opinion, is because I need to crimp all the wires for 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 this connector and then. With, with this box of connectors, it came with, well, this thing, this crimping tool, crimping tool, I think this is the ter technical term. But the problem is this, this is clearly not the right tool, because usually when you have this, uh, these ribbons of, of, of connectors, uh, what you would do is you would place here on the, on the tool, right? And on this this way, and you would crimp it uh, without removing from the ribbon. But this uh, this jaw here is too big. I if I crimp this way, I'm gonna be crimping the the pin part as well. Uh, so this should be much narrow. But of course, the Chinese they just send me the their jelly bean part, and that is not specific for this JST uh, ribbons. So yeah, so it's gonna take a lot of time because I needed to remove every single of them, then get a plier and apply just a little bit of pressure here to hold the wire, and then position there and so I can crimp. So I already did some one uh, for testing and it's take more or less one minute to, to crimp each one of, of this. So yeah, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna spend uh, 
uh, <laughs> at least one hour crimping all, all the wiring. Uh, ju just to crimp, then I need to check all, all the, the pins for, for this board and, and place in the specific connectors. Okay, so now I'm going with you to the printer and I'm gonna be showing you uh, there what are my plans. So here I am in the floor ready to show you what are the plans. So uh, let's start with the power supplies, okay? So there are three original power supplies on the Stratasys printer. So those are the, the power supplies. I'm gonna start with this one that is the biggest one. And this is the 24 volts, 10 amps uh, power supply. This one we are definitely we're gonna be using. We're gonna be using this, uh, this power supply for the motors and for the extruder heaters as well, okay? So this, this uh, power supply is gonna be ex exclusive for it. Then we have the original computer. This is basically an AT power supply and it has uh, five volts and 12 volts. So I'm gonna be using the five volts to fit the Raspberry. Uh, and also I'm gonna be using the 12 volts to be fitting the uh, DC DC converter on the controller board, okay? Then we have this one that I wouldn't like to use, but I think it's gonna be handy in the end. And this is a 120 uh, volts uh, power supply. And the reason that this uh, uh, power supply exists is because uh, the heaters on these printers uh, and uh, for the heated chamber and for the extruders itself are 120 uh, volts DC. So to accommodate uh, uh, both like American, European market with the different voltage Stratasys just went for a high volt power supply to unify. So this way, this this uh, machine can operate from 100 to 250 without any issues and without you needing to change heaters or anything like this. So this is in the end is gonna be pretty handy because yeah, the heaters they are 120. Um, and I'm not gonna be using the extruder heaters. I'm gonna change to 24 volts because it's what E3D uh, supplies on, on, on their extruders. But for the chamber heaters, uh, I'm gonna keep this power supply. So I don't need to, to change anything. I don't need to give excess voltage there and, and make a current control loop. Uh, so this, uh, this power, power supply solves my problems. So I'm gonna be reinstalling this this uh, power supplies on, on the printer back again, and then we are gonna be fixing the controller board. So here we have all the the, the wiring and the old connectors uh, placement. So I'm gonna install in this uh, this controller board more or less on this position here. And the reason for that, uh, first let me show you. So I have the Raspberry Pi here as well. So he's gonna be place it so somewhere close to, to the controller as well. And the reason that I'm gonna uh, be placing very close to, to, the, uh, to the corner here, the controller, it's because I have this big ass uh, UPS here. So it's not working at the moment. I got this on a dumpster uh, defective. Uh, and I saw some signs of uh, water damage. And so I believe that the problem is some resistor or something that is, is not connecting well, because uh, it, it's showing me on the LCD in the, in the diagnostics that he, there is a wiring problem. So I think he is detecting something is, is off uh, and like uh, a wiring problem. So I'm gonna need to do further investigation to see if I can uh, actually uh, fix this board. Uh, so if, if I can fix the, my manage this, to fix this board, then I'm gonna install this UPS on this printer. And then I'm gonna be installing on this, this corner here. So I'm ca I can keep the controller here, I can keep the UPS here and the uh, Pi, uh, Raspberry Pi as well. And all, all the power supply 
my boards are here um, uh, over this this cooling fan. Uh, so I hope this way uh, I can accommodate all the boards. And if I manage to uh, to fix this this UPS, I'm gonna need to do further investigation and see if it's uh, is worth and if I can fix it in a reliable time. You know reasonable time then uh, then I'm gonna be installing it so I'm gonna already leave the space for the UPS and arrange my wires and boards to to fit the UPS okay so what I'm gonna be doing right now is I'm gonna be crimping all this micro terminals on, on all the wires so this is gonna take one hour so yeah when I finish this I come back so I see you in more or less one hour I'm gonna cut the video because otherwise you're gonna be bored to death to see everything so see you later uh, when I have all the uh, wiring crimped so after more than one hour of work I did a little bit here so first of all I installed the three old power supplies and uh, I already fixed the control board and the Raspberry Pi here on, on the printer chassis. Uh, I already made some basically wiring so I connected the 24 volts power supply, I connected the 5 volts to, to the Raspberry and connected the 12 volts to the uh, controller as well. Uh, I had to install a bleeding resistor here because this old AT power supplies they used to uh, keep you pulsing and not working uh, without a uh, a specific amount of load and because the Raspberry and the controller uh, sinks so little current there wasn't enough current to the power supply uh, to keep on because these old power supplies they didn't have this resistor on this the power supply uh, by itself new power supplies they have a, a, a big uh, resistor inside to have a minimum current and to keep it uh, then stable but th those old ones they they, they didn't so uh, so I had here uh, a beefy ceramic resistor and now it's stable uh, I managed to find the correct wiring for the three uh, axes so X Y and Z they are uh, connected and now uh, on the next episode I'm gonna start in like uh, loading the firmware and starting checking if the axes are correct and then we we're gonna wire the rest of the sensors uh, temperature control I need a solid state relay that didn't arrive yet to connect to the heated chamber um we have the fans for for the heated chambers as well to to connect but this uh, we're gonna be working on uh, next episode okay so i hope you are enjoying guys so if if you like this content please give your like uh, and subscribe for the next episodes on this printer refurbishing renewing see you <laughs>